Well, they I see the unnatural state of celibacy that is imposed <clears throat> on the priests by the Catholic, Roman Catholic hierarchy is uh, they're in position of power. And those people in position of power that abuse that power for uh, illicit sexual gratification is entirely predictable mm. because they are in position of power and they're deprived of a natural outcome of their sexuality. So we define nature at our peril. It's now acceptable for the Maronite priests to be married mm. and similarly the Jewish uh, system that although not mandatory but highly recommends that rabbis are all married. So it's now high time for the Catholic Church to change that stupid rule of celibacy yeah. on the uh, uh, yeah. their, uh, priests and uh, now get back to what nature demands. <laughs> Thank you, uh, but I'm actually, I'll, I'll throw this straight to Rabbi Shmuel. Since you, since you were mentioned in passing. Well, well, Albert, I, uh, the reason I wrote Kosher Sex is that I believe sex is intimate and passionate. It should be erotic in a marriage. Sex is not for procreation only, or pregnant women and postmenopausal women would not enjoy sex, which they do. It is not purely recreational, because we've seen the kind of pain that uh, the Me Too movement has exposed, where, it's, where recreational sex leads to um, uh, abuses. Um, sex is about intimacy. Nothing more beautiful about sex has ever been said than Genesis 2.24. Therefore shall a man leave his mother and leave his father. He shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Sex is the motion that brings forth emotion. It takes two strangers and it sews, sews them together so that they feel indivisible. Well, as Jaja Gabor said, a man is only half until he's married, then he's finished. <laughs> 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 That's but I, 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 so I, I believe in, in sex, and I think that the pontificate of Pope Francis, who is trying to reform the church, will not be complete until he does address the issue of papal celibacy, uh, I'm sorry, of priestly celibacy. And let us recall that for the first thousand years of the Catholic Church, priests were married, and many popes were married. Having, having said that, we have not established a direct link between Absolutely. priestly celibacy on the one hand and pedophilia on the other. And it's unfair to the vast majority of extremely decent moral priests who are extremely altruistic in their calling to say that because they're celibate, there's gonna be aberrant behavior. I will say that sex is not a luxury. Sex is a human necessity. And, and it is high time for religion in general and the Catholic Church in particular to address the decline of sex, not just in marriage, but it's misuses, it's abuses. Sex is broken everywhere today. It's not just a cardinal who's been convicted, which is a tragedy, especially for the victims. It's not just Me Too and so many women who, who are feeling alienated in the culture from a toxic masculinity. It's the platonic marriages. In the United States, the average American marriage has sex once a week for seven minutes at a time, which includes the time the husband spends begging. And... <laughs> And when I tell the Australian husbands, like, once a week, they're thinking, God almighty, are all you American men on a Viagra drip? Like, how do you do this? <laughs> Sex is broken, and religion should, should be leading the way in fixing it, because we shouldn't have women feeling so alienated from an intimate culture. We should not have priests who are paying this horrible price, and above all else, we shouldn't have children who are paying that price. And I think the brokenness of sex, it's amazing that this isn't being discussed when we see the pain it's causing all around. Christina, uh, celibacy, how big an issue?